But we have Bill Thurston back after 17 years to share with us his new insights on education. Professor William Thurston. I'm going to take this hat off before it blows away. Well, there are a lot of, I thought a lot about what I could say to you, and um, there are a lot of interesting, there are a lot of interesting questions, but, but there's only one, really one thing that I can speak to you about with any authority. So let's suppose that we have a, a three manifold, <laughs> which is atoroidal and aspherical. And um, suppose also that um, it has a finite group action on it. And, and, and now, since um, New College isn't about authority, let's take it and let's put it over here on the shelf. Well, it's next September, it will have been. 20 years since since I arrived in Sarasota, along with a hundred other members of the charter class, it's really hard to believe that it's been 20 years. It doesn't seem like 20 years. It seems like a short time. I mean, I still I still feel like a student, and in fact, um, you know, I get when I run into people on the streets in Princeton, they, you know, they ask me where I am. I say I'm at Princeton, and they say, oh, are you a graduate or an undergraduate? I still feel like a student in a lot of ways. Anyway, 20 years ago, so 20 years ago, we arrived in town. I came down on the train from Washington. It was a, it was a long ride. It took um, 27 hours. And I, w I came down alone. I'd never been in the South. I'd never been in Florida, certainly, and not in Sarasota. And it's sort of amazing thinking back and wondering why I, why I came here. Because, you know, what did I have to go on? We got, we got some, we got some literature, some some literature in the, in the, in the mail. And the literature we got was really, was really amazing. Um, I guess what, what I was really impressed by was the, the statements of educational principles in the, in the literature. It, it kind of, to me, it kind of read like the Declaration of Independence a little bit. You know, it was sort of freedom from all this stupidity of, of school that I'd sort of I'd sort of rebelled against all my, all my life. Um, you know, I went to, I went to kindergarten in in Holland in a in a um, in a Montessori kindergarten. Their style of sort of Montessori, sort of their interpretation. And and then I came back to the United States. And and I just thought that the way we were being taught was wrong. <laughs> and I, um, in in grade school, I. I kind of, um, I didn't really get along real well. I, you know, I, I got C's in arithmetic and um, D's in social studies and certainly D's in handwriting. <laughs> and um, I just didn't adapt. I mean, I was, I was maybe thinking about other things on my own, but sort of daydreaming in school, but somehow I didn't, it didn't fit in. In junior high school, was somewhat better, but but I rebelled a bit more, and I I used to get into big fights with my teachers about uh, whether things that really maybe they should have known, like whether the moon goes around the Earth or not. But um, but it was very traumatic for me because because somehow the teacher was in the position of authority, and um, it just wasn't appropriate for the teacher to to be wrong 
it wasn't appropriate for the teacher to, to get anything from the students. Or, you know, you know, it, just because I happened to have read some astronomy books or something, it didn't mean that I should speak up in science class and say that the phases of the moon are caused by the way the sun shines on it and not that the Earth's shadow falls on the moon. And, um, you know, in high school, high school, I guess I adapted fairly well eventually, and I got good grades, but I thought it was stupid. And, um, well, for instance, in, in, for my Latin class, I wrote a, I wrote a pamphlet, a kind of cynical, cynical sort of pamphlet, in a way, about how to get good grades in Latin. I, it was very effective, though. Uh, we, we, we had to recite our lesson every, every day. You know, we had to do a certain translation, and I couldn't quite sort of do it on the spur of the moment if I hadn't thought about it, which I, which I often hadn't. <laughs> but there were certain, there were certain techniques. There were certain techniques of um, asking questions which one knew would be of interest to the Latin teacher. She would start talking about Latin, Roman culture and so forth, which was quite interesting. But yeah. anyway, there, there, there were certain techniques, and I sort of developed these techniques. But I felt very skeptical and very cynical about education from high school, as a lot of people do. A lot of people kind of react to it by kind of withdrawing. I didn't withdraw, but I felt very cynical. And then I started looking at college literature, and um, it was mostly, for the most part, depressing. It looked like a continuation of high school. And I really didn't want to go to some place where, where I'd have um, have a, you know, all these all these kind of uniform requirements, uniformity imposed by the necessity of um, grading people. And um, I really thought people should be get their education as individuals. And then finally, a lot of the advertising for New College in the beginning was through the National Merit Semifinalists, and I, I got a I got a brochure from them, and it was really like you know a lantern in the darkness somehow. This, these principles that you know in the in the final analysis, each person is responsible for her or his own education. They, they were a little more archaic in those days. And the, the best education comes from the act of confrontation of two first-class minds and all the corollaries of it, all the corollaries of it. Um, it was just very, very nicely set forth. Of course, there was a, at least this literature was a tremendous job of salesmanship, too. I mean, it, there was, you know, New College was to be the best in every way, not, not just in terms of academic excellence, but, I mean, everybody's, everybody's ideals were there. Um, it was going to have all the authorities do, as well as sort of a, a good way of operating. You know, the, the literature began, our, our first faculty appointment is Arnold Toynbee, the world-renowned historian. They didn't quite tell us that... Um, he would be there as a visitor for three months, which was, you know, it was quite, quite wonderful, but it wasn't actually a central part of New College. <laughs> and, um, and then there were pictures of the dormitories. The, um, our dormitories are designed by world-famous architect I.M. Pei, and they had beautiful models. They didn't mention at the bottom that the dormitories weren't complete yet, but there we were. Um, I. You know, my parents just kind of let me pick my college on my own. I'm not sure what gave them the wisdom to do this or the foolishness, whichever it was. Probably foolishness. But um, I was really shocked once when a, kind of, a friend of our family who, who was kind of, we all kind of respected for a sort of practical sense. I asked, he was talking to him about where I was going to go to college, and I showed him this literature, and he looked through it, and he looked at me. And he said, you're taking a big risk. <laughs> and that's true, I was. I was. Um, and I kind of rationalized it to myself by thinking that if this was a fraud, which it was, if this is a fraud, <laughs> then the perpetrators of this fraud kind of deserve to, to, to get the fruits of their, <laughs> of their labors. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was just new college was just kind of an idea that you know people people were really dedicated to, and it was just an idea. Anyway, I was I, I was really feeling a great sense of suspense when I arrived in New College. I didn't know whether it would in Sarasota. I didn't really know whether it would be here, but we arrived and. Um, we got taken out to Lido Key. There was, you've heard about, you know about a lot of this. Um, we got put up in a fine hotel, you know, the landmark, what it used to be called the Landmark Hotel. It turned into the um, Akutiki Hotel, sort of. Anyway, and, and it's now surrounded by condominiums. It was part of, um, as part of my research, I um, felt the need to go out there yesterday afternoon and um, investigated the beaches there, and there. The beach is still as beautiful and white and sandy, but the the hotel is now desolate and it's boarded up and it's going to be turned in. This lot is going to be turned into a um, convention hotel center sponsored by Burt Reynolds. It's a little, really kind of sad piece of my past vanishing. It's, you know. Anyway, so so then. Oh, that was all fine. You know, we had all these outside, famous outside speakers, and we just had this tremendous glow and aura of, you know, we were really going to show the world. And then about around Christmas time, the president told us that, um, that well, certain things began to happen. Um, one of the things was that, you know, our dorms still weren't quite finished, and and New College couldn't quite afford to keep us in Landmark Hotel anymore. So, but but there was a uh, um, there was a horse stable on the property of the college, <laughs> and um, and they they um, rapidly sort of converted it into into a sort of barrack style. I mean, housing for for the 60 uh, men, you know, sort of double bunks three feet between them and, and, and you know, and they got some old saggy mattresses and so forth and they fixed it up real good. It's still there, the barn. It's hard to imagine 60 people living in it. The women, the women, we were all, well, the women got put in the science lab. The science got put in the bay or someplace. And um, anyway, we came back. And then the dean was fired. It was a big shock. Not that we'd respected you know, we mistrusted the dean ahead of time as a sort of representative of authority, which we didn't believe in. But um, but after he was fired, we <laughs> believed in him. <laughs> and um, and, um, and there was big controversies and oh, all sorts of controversies. It was really an amazing time that I can't describe. You know, it was a roller coaster. Somehow we adapted. Um, I adapted to the barn by, um, I went out to the hardware store and bought a sheet of polyethylene and I took it down down here into the wooded area where, where nobody goes because it's all brambly and I said I camped out there for three months, except, <laughs> except some of the time when, when the bugs and the cold got to me, um, I, had a little, I had a little game I played with the security guard. Um, he was real friendly. and. Um, he was kind of proud of his professionalism and so forth. And so I made a deal with him that if I could hide in um, the Ringling House, which is now the library, and if, if I could hide well enough so he couldn't find me, I could stay there. So I thought of some very ingenious.